All right, time to talk about it. Time to talk about it. You know, a lot of times, um, the topic today is um, Vice President Mike Pence, um, The View, enjoyed it. You know, it's a little late, but, you know, I'm coming, I'm about to chime, I'm about to chime in on something. Um, they had a discussion, and in the discussion, a young lady named um, one of the Dustin, or one of the young ladies, I think it's a black young lady, she said that she's a good Catholic, and um, she went to law school at Notre Dame, and she said she don't want her, or I'm paraphrasing, her vice president speaking in tongues. <laughs> so then the young lady says, you know, it's okay. Then Joy chimes in and made a statement about it's one thing to be speaking to God, but it's another thing for God to be speaking to you. Jesus to be speaking to you, that would be called mentally insane. I'm paraphrasing, mentally insane. So because of that statement, they went back and forth. Mike Pence, Vice President Mike Pence chimed in. Um, she made an apology. Well, let me show you how, how crazy this is. Whoopi Goldberg says, now listen to this. Do you think Christians are insane? She says, no, I'm a Christian. My mom's a Christian. I don't think Christians are insane. Now, you got to go back to the statement. She said mentally insane. Who? People hearing from God. She is, who is in agreement with her? A whole bunch of Christians. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Just like the other lady said, I don't want my vice president speaking in tongues. This is American Christianity, period. And if you think it's anything else, you are naive. You understand? There's a spiritual realm out here that is real. God is not dead. He's still talking, walking, manifesting in all kinds of ways. Jesus is still talking to his people. Just because you never heard Jesus talk don't mean the next man didn't hear Jesus talk. And somebody brought up some crazy thing about uh, people hearing things like <clears throat> when people say they, they kill their whole family, but like God told me to do it. Their God did tell them to do it. And even if they say that Jesus told them to do that, that won't the real Jesus. Why would Jesus tell you to kill anybody? See, Jesus would not violate the scriptures. Jesus would not violate no scripture. So when you have somebody saying, God told me to murder somebody, come on, man, get out of here. That Jesus that told you that was Satan. That's why the Bible said, test every spirit to see whether it's of God. Now, because you got some people murdering people in the name of Jesus, killing their whole family, then all Christians that, that hear from God are crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Tell me a, a president that ever showed any signs that they were hearing from God. There's no record of it. You know what I'm saying? Hope, I hope Mike Pence, I hope Vice President Mike Pence is hearing from God. You know, but this is, this is the condition of the whole church. And in, in, in the music industry, the, the ministry, everything. If you let people know who you really are, who you really are, how you really, like, like you, you, you. You pull back and show them that Wakanda, and I ain't talking about the movie per se, I'm just saying, you show them that you're speaking in tongues, dreams and visions, hearing from the Lord, they're going to be scared to death, throw you off as crazy, all those different things, and you have to be prepared for that, God, God will make you mentally strong to deal with that, this is the church that, when I say the church, I'm just saying fellowships, business. Um, um, meeting places, denominations. Many denominations are godless, atheist organizations that kicked the Holy Spirit to the curb a long time ago. There's no difference between the, the church that was in the book of Acts and the church today. We just operate under different societies. You have capitalists, communists, socialists, tribal, all different types of, of um, economies in the earth realm that, uh, Believe or follow of Yeshua has to survive in. So it's not going to always look the same. But the, the essence of it has always been the same. 
being baptized in the, the death burial, accepting the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach's descension into hell, grabbing the keys of death and hell, and his ascension to heaven, leaving gifts unto men, some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and sending his Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to empower believers, to imbue you with power in order to witness, to deliver this message. So yeah, where they at though? And it's the same thing in the gospel. You got you got gospel entertainers, gospel artists. Some believe in the gifts of the spirit. Some don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. You gotta you gotta treat everybody with with their own level of of spiritual living um, life because some cats just haven't experienced that yet. Some don't believe in it. Some believe you are possessed by the devil. These are Christians. Some Christians deny the the power of the Holy Ghost. These are Christian atheists. And they're all around, especially in the industry, especially in the music industry, especially in the popular um, church world. They think you're nuts because you speak in tongues. But see, those who speak in tongues have dreams, visions, believe in the power of the Holy Ghost to heal, all these different things. They ain't worried about none of you brothers and sisters who have not come into that type of revelation yet. We love these brothers and sisters, but we understand the Bible says be as wise as serpents and humble as doves. We know what the power of the Holy Ghost does. We know that praying in tongues edifies yourself. Got nothing to do with you. Now, there is a tongues that need to be interpreted. That's in a public square. You get out there just speaking in tongues in front of everybody all loud. Somebody got to interpret that, my brother. But if you amongst a bunch of believers and y'all praying in tongues in the spirit and or you by yourself in your house and you so no, but you ain't gotta interpret nothing. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. The believers are just praising God, but there's a tongue that comes out of praise and worship in a in a public place that needs to be interpreted. And I've been in this situation a couple of times. That's when them tongues stand out proclaiming something. So you have people worship, hallelujah, glory, and all of a sudden you start to hear, that got to be interpreted. You can't come out with no tongue and, 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 and everybody focusing on you. And the way I was at, when that happens, that person finishes, everybody be, at that point, everybody is sitting down. That person sits down, then another person gets up and interprets the tongue. Yeah. I've been a part of that twice. I've been a part of where I was singing in Creole and a guy heard me singing in Portuguese. That was a language interpretation. I was singing in Creole. He was hearing it in Portuguese. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, there's all different kind of various things, visions, dreams, prophecies, the whole nine. But the one thing about it is if that spirit is in you and, and causing you to have a gift or operate in a gift, the one thing about it, the gift coming from the master, God, in the name of Yahshua, will not violate the scriptures. So joy was a, was correct in what she was saying because she is a Christian and she's just like many Christians in America, carnal to the bone gristle. Now, let's deal with the spiritual realm. So many people are scared to step out into the, the real world with the gospel. And when I say real world, I'm talking about talking about talking to somebody, knocking door door. I'm talking about witches, Satanists, people who practice ancestral worship, um, voodoo, um, juju, um, 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 voodoo, santeria, all these different things. <clears throat> scared to death. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with people who are speaking in demonic tongues. You understand what I'm saying? They don't know what to do. They just, well, they don't know what to do with it. When a, a demon manifests in a person, a person starts manifesting another um, voice out of their own um, larynx, out of their own throat. And all of a sudden, another whole voice is coming forth. And it's not that person. They don't have no answers for that. And the only answer they have it for is the same answer that, that Joy gave on The View. Mental illness. Well, in the spiritual 
Christian side or followers of Shua, we call it demon possession. Now, every now and then, it could be mental. A dude could be so-called bipolar or, or, or schizophrenia, whatever you want to call it. But sometimes these things cannot be diagnosed or put into categories that, that scientists and psychologists and psychiatrists have come up with in their um, degreed work, made up mess. Because it comes from the spiritual realm and is demon possession. Yeah, possessed by devils. That's why the Bible said these signs will follow them that believe. They will speak in other tongue, cast out demons. Now, it's no ritual of casting out no demon. Your very presence, if you got the spirit of the most high in you, will cast out demons. Let alone two or three are gathered in his name and the Holy Spirit. And there are a lot of demons about to run. Because one shall put a thousand to flight, two shall put ten thousand to flight. Them unclean foul spirits got to go. Well, how can you have a thousand? Because the Bible showed you an example of a man being possessed by a legion, a, a, a gang of demons. <clears throat> and the better word for demons should be unclean foul spirits. You wouldn't even know where they come from if it were not for different things like the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch tell you where these spirits come from. They come from the Nephilim. It's their spirits. It's these hybrid human beings that mix with these angels, fallen angels that are bound up. So you don't have that. Like, the church ain't into that. They keep it nice, tight, and clean. Get you a cup of coffee, get a donut, go sit down and listen to a man talk for an hour, go home, go on about your business till Wednesday Bible study where you're going to get the same message you got every year, the same date. You see what I'm saying? You're not going to get into this. And this that's why when people go overseas or when they meet people from countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and India, and Asia, different parts of Europe, they're shocked to find out the type of warfare or the type of interaction with the spiritual realm that goes on amongst the saints. We ain't talking about amongst the saints. And these same people that don't believe that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can manifest and send his angels forth to do dynamic work. For the kingdom of God, these same people give the devil credit and believe people are talking to demons, Satanism, are having rituals and all the same ones, you see. But then you got the ones who don't believe in no spiritual, they don't believe there's no devil. These are Christians. I ain't, I'm not talking about the, the, the world. I'm talking about those who claim they in Christ. So there is a spiritual realm. There's a spiritual realm, and because I'm immersed in the fire of the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of Yahshua, I'm not afraid of the spiritual realm. I have no fear, but I do have wisdom. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, so when I go in certain circles, I know. I don't care what demons and spirits or whatever ancestors you're communicating with. I don't care what kind of shrines and altars you have in your house, the Buddha and Confucius, and what the communication you have with familiar de de spirits of divination. It matters not to me because I'm communicating with the Most High Yah in the name of Yahshua. He telling me what to do. He protected me. He filling me over and over again with the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Ghost. So I know that mine is more powerful than all of theirs because my God, the spirit that is the most high, Yahweh, is the creator of all. And he manifested in the flesh. That's why his name was Emmanuel, God with us, the Passover lamb. And he's the only God that this man has ever known from Adam to, to you. You understand what I'm saying? Ezekiel, Malachi, John the Revelator, all of them. Abraham, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He'd be like, Abraham, he been dead. You ain't 50 years old, Jesus. Verily, verily, I said before Abraham, I am. That's John 8. Read it. Get into the scriptures and find out baby Jesus isn't the beginning of the word of God. That's why there can't be no religions before Jesus. There are no religions before Yahshua because Yahshua was in the garden of Eden talking to Adam and Eve. Where you at, Adam? How you know you're naked? What happened? Hmm? Yeah, in the cool of the day. Who you think Abraham was dealing with? Who you think Ezekiel was dealing with? Who you think Daniel was dealing with? Who you think the three boys in the furnace was dealing with? Who you think Daniel was dealing with in the lion's den? You see what I'm saying? There's a God. It's like the movie said, God is not dead. God is not dead. Kanye said he walking, he talking. Oh, why are you in the Bible? Some talk don't need to be in the Bible because it's just for you. Make that left right now. Bam. Your blessing right over there. Don't 
go to that club tonight, <laughs> death was waiting on you. You see, God is real. And, and, and if you grieve the Holy Spirit, that's on you. But there's a water baptism that you can receive, you know, dry sinners become wet sinners. It is a baptism of the Holy Ghost to the, for the filling of the Holy Spirit to be filled, immersed in the spirit of the most high God. Him circumcising your heart and you becoming brand new and the commandments of God being written on the inside of you. God is still talking, you know, it's just that, you know, it's still a faith walk. We walk by faith, not by sight. So still, sometimes you got to get the moving. You got to get to working. You got to do what you're doing. It's just that in your moving, grooving, and going around, going, doing what you got to do, you can see God jumps in it and your faith grows because you start to be like, okay, God, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I really can't call you savior. 